Welcome back, Seth Bling here. Last week I showed you a couple of MC Edit filters that create these big blobs of spawners in order to spawn and delete structures. This week I'm going to show you some improvements that I've made. Now those two big blobs of spawners become these two little structures here. And I can push this button to delete the house and this button to rebuild that house. And you'll notice this time we've got a bed and a chest. These weren't supported by the old filter because they weren't they aren't uh, full blocks and they they didn't interact well with the falling sand. But in this filter I've accounted for that sort of thing and it works. And these are way smaller. These are entirely self-contained. This is all of the structure here. It's not like there's some wireless redstone that, that's going on. This is all of it. And these these two structures here fulfill the exact same uh, the exact same function as those two structures over there, except they're just way smaller and cause a lot less lag. Now, what's going on here is you have a single spawner, and on top of that, there's a spawner minecart. Here, I'll go ahead over here. When this spawner minecart gets broken, either by the lava or if you break it manually, then the spawner here spawns a new minecart above there. Um, because its max entity count is equal to one. So when I push this button, it spawns a new minecart. Now the new minecart, actually if you look over in this lava, the minecart spawns a minecart over here. Then that minecart spawns two more minecarts, also in the lava, and then it breaks. And then each of those spawn more minecarts, or falling sand, and then they break, etc. So there's this chain that lasts for, well, in the case of this one, lasts for 25 ticks, and includes 225 minecarts. And if I press the button again, you can see all the minecarts that are getting spawned in and then breaking in that lava. And if you kind of saw in the corner of the screen, uh, that's what spawned in all of these falling sand entities and everything at just the right timing. It's kind of a pain to get all those timings right. Uh, but this method has some really big advantages in that uh, you don't have all these hundreds of mob spawners rendering all the time. You only just have one mob spawner and one spawner cart rendering and unless you know you've pushed the button in and the thing is going but most of the time when you're not when you're not spawning or deleting a structure there's just those two things to render and that's way easier on your computer um, and 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 especially because it's not just the rendering the spawner here is only looking for one minecart each of those hundred spawners or whatever was each looking for a hundred minecarts and that that's a that's kind of a bad thing in, in programming that's an n squared problem and uh and that means each of those spawners was causing a little bit of lag on its own, and when you put them all together, it's, it was causing quite a lot. You can probably see that in my frame rate. Uh, well, I'm not sure if you could see it in the video, but it's causing my frame rate to drop a little bit because all those are rendering and and uh, and making all their checks. But these these don't really cause any performance impact when they're not running, which is a huge deal when it comes to this many spawners. Uh, it makes it a lot more practical. Uh, uh, there is a little bit of lag sometimes when you're actually running the routine because you have all of those spawner minecarts sitting around. But even then, uh, you don't have all 225 uh, spawner minecarts all at the same time. Some of them are spawned in, and then they die, and then other, sp other spawner minecarts spawn in. So even then, you only have a few at a time that are actually present, which helps with the lag a bit. Um, the I was really proud at how small these structures were in comparison with the original structures that Traslander was creating uh, with these huge arrays of, of spawner minecarts and, and spawners, but this, <laughs> this little structure here brings it to a whole new level. The functional part is really just right here, it's this 3 by 4 or 3 by 4 by 3 region here. Uh, you just need a monostable input, and so you could even combine those if you had a couple of these spawner systems that you wanted to hook up in in, uh, in parallel or in series. So very cool. It, it spawns a little sign that says that either it spawns or deletes the structure, what the size of the structure is, how long it takes in ticks, that's uh, there are 20 ticks per second, and how many sand it spawns, which is also how many um, minecart, uh, I guess it's going to spawn in a few more minecarts than sand, but it says how many sand it spawns in the course of spawning or deleting the structure. It's pretty cool. Um, the the filter will also now work with things like redstone and minecart rails and all, all those other non-full blocks. 
it has some problems with things that attach to walls sometimes. That's something you have to watch out for. Like uh, it can have problems with redstone torches if you're trying to spawn in redstone torches. But you can actually spawn in some redstone circuits using this, which is also pretty cool. Uh, and 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 generally it just works very well for most types of things. It also doesn't work very well for liquids. But overall it's a huge improvement over the previous filter. All right, there's one more thing I want to show you, and that's this piston. Now, uh, a couple weeks ago, I, in Mega Bloks episode three, I showed you Twitch Nitro's piston that extends and retracts using the falling sand trick, and so I've recreated that here. I used Twitch Nitro's structure for the body, and uh, but I, I recreated it using my filters. So where you saw those big redstone structures. Uh, of Twitch Nitros. In the distance here you can see four structures uh, that were created by my filter. Those use wireless receivers and receive the signal from here and they cause the piston to extend or retract. So let's run the let's run this the uh, the routine here and we'll watch it happen. Now you'll notice this is going about as fast as it was in the video that uh, where I showed Twitch Nitro's piston extending and retracting. The thing is though that that video was sped up by a factor of four. This one's in real time. You can see all the falling sands and everything. They're falling at the, at the speed that falling sand falls. Uh, maybe a little bit slower just because there's a little bit of lag caused by all these falling sand entities. But this is all in real time. I haven't sped up the video. And so really this is probably about four times as fast as Twitch Nitro's version. Here we go, we're all done here. And let me, uh, let me retract it, this is even faster. And there is not much lag caused by all of this. Uh, my frame rate uh, is pretty good. My uh, my screen is freezing every few seconds, just for a, a fraction of a second. Um, but that's mostly only going to happen while the piston is actually extending or retracting. So a afterwards, the frame my frame rate is pretty much unaffected, and uh, and and we don't have to worry about those structures. So this fits fits nicely into a map uh, where you don't need that stuff to be going on most of the time and it could actually probably be used by map makers. It's pretty cool. So if you want to download this filter, there's a link in the video description, and I hope you build something really cool with it. I know there's a lot of new possibilities, and this one, this version is just really performant and doesn't take up much space. That's about it. Thanks for watching.